Hello everyone. In this quick tip, we're going to cover how to turn text into dust. And this applies to anything that has alpha information within it. So it doesn't have to be text. It could be any file that you bring in with alpha information within it or that you create within the program with alpha information in it. So let's get started. For this, I am going to create a text layer in the middle of the composition and I'm going to spell out the word dust. I'm going to center this to the, to the composition. So I'm going to center my center point, my anchor point to the comp to the layer first. Control Alt Home or Command Shift uh, Command Option uh, Home on the Mac, and then Control Home to bring it to the center of the screen, or Command Home to center the layer onto the screen. So with this information, notice that basically this is just text, and it's just a font that looks like it's rusty and it's old. So that's why I chose it. Uh, 1942 report. And what I want to do with this is I want to make a copy of that text layer. So I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to rename the new copy particles. And that's because that is where I will be placing the particles in that layer. Now, the idea is that I'm going to use the alpha information within these letters to create the particles with the particle uh, uh, filter that we're going to be applying. In this case, it's called CC Particle Systems 2. And so that's the one I want to use. Let me go ahead and drop that into the particles layer. And when I scrub, you'll notice that all my particles are coming from the center of the screen and they're getting cut off. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how I want to expand the boundaries of my layer. Right now it's constrained to the size of the layer. The particles are constrained to the size of the layer. So I want to expand that. Two ways of doing this. Way number one is to pre-composite the particle layer and make sure that the new precomposition expands to the edges, which we've done in class, or we can go ahead and use something called CC Composite. Now, what CC Composite does is basically it expands the bounds of that layer as long as it is on top of the stack of filters. So if you place it at the top of the stack of filters, what it does is basically it tells any filter that is underneath it that the boundaries match the boundaries of the current composition. Therefore, you can see the entirety of the fill of the particles basically spraying everywhere. So that's one problem solved. The second problem is we see all our particles coming from the center of the screen where there isn't any alpha information. I mean, that's just that should be transparent. So why are we seeing those particles there? Well, what we need to do then is under the particle systems, let me go ahead and collapse the composite and go to the particle systems particle drop down. There is an option called source alpha inheritance. When I click on that, my particles disappear, and they didn't disappear. Basically, what it's saying is there is no alpha, there is no alpha information here. Therefore, you have no visibility. However, wherever there are characters, you should be able to see something. So let's move that producer of particles to anywhere where we can actually see text. And for that, I'll go to the producer, and then I'll choose my position for the producer. And if I click here, for example, I can I just moved it from the center to here. And now you can see that whenever my producer touches alpha information, it basically makes the particles appear, which is exactly what we want. Now, this still looks like they're being produced from one single point. We want to expand that to the height of my text, and that is controlled by the radius y value under the producer. So let me go ahead and start expanding this until I see kind of like a clump of particles at the top and bottom of my text which is around uh, about, I want to say about 10-ish, 11-ish. So if I do that and I start scrubbing this to move it to the left and right, I see that about 10, 11, it's a good value to work with. So I'll start with that. Notice that I have kept that producer roughly around the center of my text, which is what I want to do. The next step is I want to animate that uh, producer moving across the screen. So I want to move this to all the way to the left-hand side make sure that my time marker is at the beginning of my composition and set a keyframe for that producer position. So I set, a, I set a keyframe there. Then I'll go about, I want this whole thing to take about one and a half seconds to move across the screen to create kind of like a breeze or wind that basically blows the text into dust. For that, then I'm going to go ahead and move that producer point all the way across to the other side of my composition. So basically what happens in one sec and one and a half seconds is going to be that thing is going to be moving across, creating this kind of an effect. OK, now this is very explosive. Plus, my particles don't look the right color. They should be white like my text. 
And so to change that, what I want to do is I want to go back and revisit several things. First things first, the, the physics of this are all wrong at this point. Basically, everything is just simply falling down, which is not wrong. It's just not what we want. We want this to be blown into the air like dust particles floating into the air. So I want to change the physics of this. Let me collapse the producer, open up the physics, and let's take a look at things in here. The first thing we see is velocity, which means what is the explosive velocity? What is this? That's the speed at which these particles are being produced. This is a very sensitive value. So very little change will work wonders. Don't go high on this number because then you're literally just pushing these things super fast. So if you go, for example, to a speed of 0.3 on that value, that should be more than plenty for how we want the particles to be pushed out or, or uh, exploded from the producer, then we want to go ahead and have some of that speed at which the producer is moving across the screen. We want that to be inherited by our particles. Remember, these are not fire chips. These are not little sparks. These, at this point, they're going to be pieces of sand. So when the wind blows, which is what the producer motion is supposed to be creating, then I want to carry some of that to my particles. And you see that right now they're just simply dropping down. They're not following the producer. So I want to increase that velocity to about, uh, let's say, um, about 30 or 40 percent. Let's, let's do 40 percent. And you'll see that basically it just blows the, te the particles in the direction of the producer. How fast they're going is basically like the wind is pushing them. Now, gravity is pulling this down, so I want to make sure that instead of a positive value, I have a negative value, so I want to use something like point, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.4, something like that. Again, a value of 1 is basically one gravity value, so if you go negative 0.1, the whole thing is just going to be shooting up, so you want to be within the range between 0 and 1, even in the negative range. So in this case, it's negative 0.3, it will work just fine, I think. Let's see. That looks good. Maybe negative 0.4. Yeah, it's going way too far up to negative 0.2 would do just fine. Let's see. Boom, that's better. All right. Now, resistance is basically countering the inherent velocity that we applied here. And that is to give a bit of random um, value to the particles. So I want to make this, let's say about, let's start with a value of like 20. You see that it brings them back. So it's counter, counter, uh, countering the value of the inherent velocity so that it, the particles don't just wildly go and then start slowing down as they move far away from their original position. You see that? So that creates more of a natural look, increasing that. Maybe I want to do that. Yeah, let's keep it at 20. Direction is in which direction do you want the particles to go, which you can change depending on your needs for your, for your, particular, um, for your particular composition. But I'm going to keep them as they are. And extra, it actually adds more randomness to the direction in which these particles take off. So if I want to, I want to increase that to like two or three, let's say. That just adds a little bit extra randomness. And you can see that the particles are no longer shooting in one single direction. They're actually spreading out. So that gives me a little bit more texture, let's call it. So that takes care of that. Uh, let's go ahead and switch the colors for birth. So I'm going to switch the birth color from yellow to white and the death color from red to about grayish to a little bit darker than white. Something like this would do. And that gives us that sandy look. Now, this is looking fine, but what we want is probably to have a little bit more uh, particles. So let's go back up to the top of the CC particle systems filter and increase the birth rate from 40 to about 50. That's going to produce a little bit more particles, or 40 if it's too much. You play around with the value as it, as it fits your composition. And the particles seem to disappear a bit too fast. So I want to give them a little bit more longevity. So I want to make them about four seconds long. And let's see if that actually does the trick. That actually looks a little bit better. That works. Um, I also want to change. You could change the particle type, by the way. Right now we're working with lime, but there's a whole bunch of different options. And you will see as we create fire and fog and other things, and smoke, sorry you will see that we make use of all of these in different instances, depending on what our target is. For what we're doing, this works just fine. These are a bit bright, so I want to bring down my uh, max opacity to about 30%, I would say. Um, that looks a little bit more natural. That looks a little bit more like actual sand. 
And so with that done, what I want to do is start adding some um, measure of um, uh, randomness to the actual dust. And to do that, what I want to do is with everything keyframed already, I want to go ahead and or change. I want to go ahead and start adding some expressions. So the first expression, and we're going to use just the wiggle expression, which we've used in the past in class. So I'm going to go back to the producer, and I'm going to change the radius Y, the radius X expression by pressing the Alt key on the keyboard and clicking on the stopwatch to open up the um, expressions window. And I'm going to type wiggle, and I'm going to use a value of 10 times per second and an amount of 10. So that is the, the the amount of wiggling that I want on that. I want to copy that uh, expression and I want to apply it to the radius as well, to the radius Y. So that works just fine. Let's see what result that gives us. Bit more randomness, negligible, but good enough. Again, uh, just a little bit of change goes a long way on this, uh, on this kind of effect. Let's apply the same thing for velocity and all of these different values. So for velocity, I'm going to wiggle, but notice that, remember, I said velocity is a very sensitive number. So uh, applying 10, a, a value of 10 to this is just too much. So what we want, what I usually do is I look to about two thirds of the value of what I'm working here, working with here, or a fourth of the value or two, I mean, three fourths of the value. And that's what I apply. So in this case, if I make it say velocity uh, 0, 10, 0 0.2, would give me enough wiggle value. And you'll notice that I'm starting to see differences in the way they speed up from each time that you create particles. So that's good. Uh, let's say my herd velocity then applying that formula that I just told you would be wiggle. And instead of 10 in the second value, I used 40 as the original, so I probably changed this to 30. Uh, let's do gravity. And gravity would be 10, and I use 0.2, so it would be negative, or actually 0.15 would be the value for that one. Resistance would be, since that's 20, I would change the second value to about 15. And for the extra, 1.5 for the second value. So that is basically the changing values that we want to apply to this to create their randomness. And you can see that the dust is now a little bit more random. Some particles go faster up, some others go slower, and the spread is a little bit more natural. Let's do a quick playback of this. And that works just fine. Okay, so that done, let's go ahead and you, act, you can actually uh, wiggle the value for the birth and death color. So let's take a look at that. So if I click on the birth color and I apply, a wiggle value to that, you'll notice that it creates this, you know, colorful, almost rainbow-like amount of colors. We don't want that. We want to control that to be very minimal. So if we go to we go to a value of instead of 10, maybe like two on the wiggle, then that's still pretty high, actually, if you ask me. So maybe like 0.5 would do if you want to add that a little bit of extra color. I honestly don't think it's necessary, so I'm going to remove that expression from that because we already chose the birth and the colors. So that works just fine. I'm going to play this back really quick. And I want to also at this point inside the particle, uh, let's see, let me go to, actually, let's see if I can add extra randomness to this. I could go ahead and apply a filter like... Um, Let's see, uh, something that actually is going to make the entire compass, the entire set of, of, of particles wiggle as if the wind was going back and forward. And we could use something called turbulent displacement for that. So let's go ahead and look for that filter, turbulent displace. And what this is going to do, you're going to see what it's going to do right now. It basically is going to move things around when I increase or decrease, basically deforming my layer. So what I want to do is I want to apply kind of like a, that wobble a little bit. Uh, I want to change. The, so I apply turbulent displace, and I want to change the amount. I want to reduce it as you as you saw when I increased it. It basically deformed the layer heavily. I don't want that. Uh, I just want a little bit of influence changing over time. So if I go to a value of about 30, for example, or 40, that would be sufficient. And then I want to go ahead and increase the complexity of that uh 
wobbling. So instead of one, I want 1.5 or two, something like that. That will give me a little bit more of that wobble. As you can see, things kind of get bent a little bit, uh, which is the way dust actually behaves. And then I want to change the position of that uh, wobble to go upwards. To do that, I want to go ahead and add an expression to this, to the offset turbulence, which controls how the turbulence goes up or uh, up or down or left and right. So I want to go up in this case. So what I want to do is I want to create a new expression and this expression reads as follows. It says value, oops, if I can spell value, minus, and then I open square brackets, zero for the x value. I don't want to change the x. And for the y, I want to use time times about 300, let's say. And as we've seen in class during the expressions, basically what we're doing is controlling the x and y values of that particular property by changing, by using code. In this case, time being whatever my time, my playback head is times 300. So if you notice, my wobble goes up fairly fast. And that's exactly what I want. I want it to go fast that way. I also want to change the evolution. And I want to do this also using an expression. So let me go ahead and click on the Alt key and click on the stopwatch. And my expression for this one is going to be time times, let's say, every second, change it about 140, no, let's say 20, 40, 90, 90, 135. Let's do a, a change of about 135 degrees. And, and this is just little, I'm just pulling this out of my head right now. I'm coming up with values that are just, you know, you can change those values to whatever fits your composition better. Let me do 120 so that I get less of a wobble at the beginning. That works. And I'm adding now complexity and randomness to the particles. That's all I'm doing. And then at this point, I want to go ahead and also change inside that turbulent displays. I want to go into evolution options and I want to change the random seeding for this. And for this, I want to use an expression that simply adds the index value of the layer to that particular layer. Remember, index is the number of my layer. In this case, this layer is layer one. But when I make copies of this, or layer two, sorry, yeah, layer one. So when I make copies of this, this index value is going to change the position, the seed value of my turbulent displays, making my different particles come up from different places, which is going to help in the randomness. So with that done, let's go ahead and create copies of that particle's layer. So I'm going to make a couple of copies of that layer, and I'm going to change their value to screen, let's say. And uh, actually, all three could be changed to screen. And now I basically have a lot of particles going across the screen and creating that randomness that I'm looking for with the filters that I have applied. Then what I want to do at this point is I want to make the original text disappear. Now, you could use a mask for doing this to time it, or you could use a linear wipe. Whichever, whichever one's going to give you the same result. So let me go ahead and use the linear wipe in this case. Now, I've shown you how to do this with a mask, so you know how to create a mask to remove that from the screen. Let's use linear wipe as a filter. We haven't done linear wiping in class through a filter, so I want to do it this time. And for that linear wipe, basically what this is, is basically if I increase this, the position, the, the amount of completion for the transition, you'll notice that basically it's creating a mask, removing whatever happens to be on the screen. So uh, let's go ahead and keyframe this according to where the particles happen. So the particles start happening around here, around 15 frames. So I'm going to go to frame 14 and start increasing my transition for that text until I get to my text to start disappearing, which is around a value of 30%. So I'll go ahead and Click a stopwatch right there and go all the way to where the T disappears, which is around here. And now create my second keyframe as to where my T completely disappears, which happens, which happens to be around 70%. So actually a little bit more. Let's see. I don't want to leave anything lingering. So that's fine. That works just well. So as you can see, I just simply scrubbed and created two keyframes. Now, when I play this back, the text disappears with the linear wipe. If you want to get a little bit more detail, you can go in and feather ever so slightly 
to create more of a smooth transition, but you really don't get to see the text disappearing uh, or the feathering, sorry, on the linear wipe, which is the same thing as if you were feathering a mask. So there's quite not, not, not a difference there. And then to sell this effect, you can actually colorize this or you can go ahead and place it into a, an image that is part of the theme that you're working with. And then obviously look for some sound effects like I have in my case, a couple of sound effects that I had, you know, from canned sound effects of wind or sand uh, going over a surface. And that sells the effect. And that's how you turn anything with an alpha channel. Remember, this all started by looking at something that had alpha channels in it to turn it into um, dust. And this can be applied. Now you can't, since this is to see particle systems, you can make sparks or you can make little stars or as you'll see bubbles as we progress throughout the semester.